The Surface G14 has excellent build quality. The chassis is made from magnesium, which is a very lightweight material. The laptop weighs only around 1.6 kilos or 3.5 pounds. The keyboard area will flex slightly if you press really hard against it, but nothing that will cause an issue during normal usage. It has two upboard firing speakers, and the sound quality coming out of these speakers are loud and clear. The keyboard and the trackpad on the G14 is outstanding. The trackpad is very smooth and precise out of the box, and gives a nice clicky feedback. Typing on the G14 is a very pleasant experience. Each individual key has enough space between each other, and the keys itself are very distinctive and provides plenty of key travel. This is an excellent keyboard overall. Another nice feature lies in the power button, which doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Once you power on the computer, it will take you straight into Windows without having to type in another password. That is very convenient. There are four dedicated buttons on the top row above the keyboard. Two of them controls volume up and volume down, one for muting the microphone, and the fourth one is for opening Asus own Armory Crate software. The Armory Crate software lets you toggle between three different modes, silent, performance, and turbo mode. You are able to see vital stats such as CPU and GPU frequency, temperature, voltage, and fan speed. It also allows you to set up your anime matrix, which is one of the key selling points of this device. Provided that you bought the version with anime matrix, as there are two versions of this laptop, one with LED, one without LED, showing on the top lid. The non-LED version is not only cheaper, but also weighs slightly less than the LED version. You can customize your own text, pictures, or GIFs and it will show up as a set of LED animations on the back side of the panel. This is a feature not seen on too many other laptops. It might not be the most necessary function for a computer, but it is a cool feature, and it shows the company's creativity when designing this product. There are three different panels to choose from on the G14. All of them are IPS level panels with 16 by 9 aspect ratio and a peak brightness of 300 nits. All G14 panels are Panton validated. The main difference comes in resolution and refresh rate. The first panel option has a Full HD resolution with a 60Hz panel refresh rate. The second panel option also has a Full HD resolution but with 120Hz panel refresh rate. And finally, there is a third panel option that offers QHD resolution at 60Hz. The QHD resolution is sharper. However, bear in mind that on a 14-inch screen, everything becomes quite small and difficult to read. For me personally, I would choose the 120Hz Full HD option, as this panel gives the overall best gaming experience out of all three panels. Looking at the port selection, the G14 has plenty to offer. On the left side, there's a headphone jack, a USB Type-C port supporting USB 3.2 Gen 2, and DisplayPort 1.4, as well as a 65W charging via USB-C, a full-sized HDMI 2.0 port that supports resolution up to 4K and 60Hz, a DC jack for power, and finally exhaust vents for airflow. On the right side, there is a regular USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C with transfer speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. This one does not support power delivery. Two other legacy USB ports can be found. These are USB 3.2 Gen 1 with transfer speeds up to 5 gigabits per second. There are two more vents on the top side of the computer and these help to improve the overall system airflow. The fans do come on quite heavy during intensive tasks such as gaming. However, it is quite understandably given the laptop's small size. And if you're using a headphone when gaming, this is not an issue at all. One of the reasons that ASUS has been able to make this laptop so powerful yet so compact is thanks to AMD's new 7 nanometer 4000 series mobile processors. The company is using a special version of these CPUs running at 35W TDP as opposed to the standard 45W chip. This means the laptop is using less power, which helps it being more efficient 
and can also run for a longer period of time on the same charge. The G14 can, depending on the graphic card options you have, be configured with either an R5 4600HS, which is a 6-core, 12-threaded CPU, an R7 4800HS, which is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, or an R9 4900HS, also an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, but running at higher clock speed. The Zephyrus G14 comes with DDR4 3200MHz and configurable up to 32GB of RAM. There is also one available DIMM slot for future upgrade possibility. Storage-wise, this laptop comes with up to 1TB of NVMe PCIe SSD pre-configured. You can choose between four different graphic cards for the G14. 1650, 1650 Ti, 1660 Ti Max-Q, or RTX 2060 Max-Q. An adapter that delivers 180 watts of juice got you covered on the power side. In terms of wireless connectivity, G14 supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0. The G14 has on paper pretty awesome specs. So how does all this hardware perform? Well, it turns out pretty good. My version has an R7 4800HS and NVIDIA RTX 2060 Max-Q graphic card with 16GB of RAM. In synthetic benchmark programs such as Cinebench R15, I got a score of 1674. In Cinebench R20, the G14 scored 3768. In Unigine Heaven, the overall score was 1640 and 65 FPS using ultra presets and running at 1080p. I also tested the G14 with some graphically demanding games such as Hitman 2. With ultra settings, 1080p and VSync turned off, I managed to get above a solid 60 frames per second, dropping below to the 50s while in crowded areas. However, scaling this back to medium settings will make the game much more enjoyable. Witcher 3 in highest settings, 1080p resolution with VSync turned off, you can expect to hit over 60 frames per second in this game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a very beautiful game that also comes with a built-in benchmark. In highest settings, I recorded an average frames per second of 64 FPS, which is very good given that this is a very demanding game. RTX is a technology developed by NVIDIA to enable real-time ray tracing. In essence, it can deliver really realistic looking rays of light, creating a more dynamic and realistic looking environment. I'll pause and stop talking for a second and let you enjoy the game's incredible details and lighting effects. One thing to be aware of while gaming on the G14 is that the GPU will get warm, hitting over 80 degrees Celsius. If you don't absolutely demand the highest graphical setting, I would recommend to scale back to medium or high settings. This will make the laptop less warm, and also improve overall FPS. In conclusion, this is a very good purchase for students looking for a light, portable Windows machine for schoolwork and leisure, 
or business people who likes to occasionally do some like gaming, but want something that looks more discreet in the design. I could even recommend this laptop for video editing, as this computer packs enough punch for those creative workloads. While the G14 might not be the first hand choice by any hardcore gamer, you will find the overall package irresistible if you want to leave that large 15 or 17 inch brick at home while traveling. With higher graphics options available, RTX Gaming is finally a reality on compact and portable machines like the G14. I really enjoyed making a review for this laptop, and I hope they helped you to make a purchase decision as well. If you enjoyed the content, please like, comment, and share the video. Also subscribe to my channel for future videos like this one.